Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to some more FNAF news. Now, I know what you're focusing on, and I know what you're looking at, but don't focus on them. Don't look at them just yet. They're for later. I promise they're coming soon. So for this video, just focus on my face. I know it's probably painful to look at, but this area of your screen, focus on this. Don't look anywhere else. They are for later. So now that we have that out of the way, welcome back to FNAF News. Now you may be wondering what exactly we're talking about in today's video, and to that I say, what are we not talking about? The past couple FNAF News videos have been focused on a very specific topic, whether it be the fanverse or merch merchandise or security breach. The past couple FNAF news videos have all had kind of a theme to them. While this video we're going back to the basics because we have a giant assortment of news to talk about today. And because we have such a giant assortment of a whole bunch of different topics, honestly, let's not waste any more time. If you are excited for more FNAF news, hit the like button, subscribe. And let's hop into the first topic, starting off with some FNAF books. So on April 19th, we finally, finally got Felix the Shark, Fazbear Frights, book number 12. If you've been keeping up with the release of this book, you'll know that it has been delayed and delayed and delayed countless times. But we finally, finally have it. And thus marks the end of the mainline Fazbear Frights book series. It's kind of crazy. This has been going on for three years, I think. I think Into the Pit came out in 2019. So it's been, it's been a long time and it's finally over. Though what's not over and is in fact just starting is the new book series, Tales from the Pizzaplex. Now we've talked about Tales from the Pizzaplex quite a few times on the channel at this point. We've talked about the three books we have so far, Lally's Game. We also have Haps and also Song. Omnophobia. Well, not too long ago, it was revealed that we would be getting a fourth and fifth book in the Tales from the Pizzaplex series. We don't have a name, a cover, a description for either of the two books, but we do know that they are at least confirmed. December 27th, 2022 is so far the release date for Tales from the Pizzaplex number four, and it has a page count of 240, and book number five has a planned release date of March the 7th of 2023, so we're going to be going into next year with this book series, and book five also also has a page count of 240. And even though Felix the Shark, like I said, ended the mainline series of Fazbear Frights, we still have the graphic novels coming out. And in fact, the other day we got our first preview of the first volume of the Fazbear Frights graphic novel. As you can see, the book is going to feature Into the Pit, To Be Beautiful, and interestingly enough, the Plush Trap Chaser story. And I can't remember if I've talked about this, but they did actually change the cover of the book. Beforehand, there was a lot of speculation that the first cover used a fan-made model, and so I think in response to that, they just changed the artwork. People are still a little bit annoyed since the plush trap chaser on the cover doesn't have the realistic eyes and teeth that he, that he does in the story, but there's not really much we can do about that since I don't think they're going to change it again. Something that is fascinating, though, is the previews we've got. Like I said the other day, we got a preview of two pages from into the Pit and To Be Beautiful by Scholastic. The illustrations, the colors, everything just looks absolutely phenomenal, and even the- even what I'm showing you right now is like a super low-res image, so I can't wait to see what they actually look like up close and personal when the book comes out. And speaking of Fazbear Frights graphic novels, a second one has been confirmed. So far, it has a release date of March 7th, 2023, and has a page count of 192, and so far, it'll feature out of stock, Room for One More, and The New Kid. Now, if you've been paying attention, which hopefully you are, and if you are, hey, maybe subscribe if you haven't yet. But yeah, if you've been paying attention, you may notice that Out of Stock was in the first graphic novel. So I do think there was a bit of a slip up. I'm sure they're going to replace Out of Stock in the second graphic novel with some other story. But that is all of the FNAF book news I have for you in today's video. Next up, we have probably the weirdest FNAF news I will ever give you guys on this series. So earlier this month, Andy Field, who was the voice actor for Hand Unit and Tutorial Unit and Dread Unit, 
all the units really. They made a tweet saying, hey FNAF fans, now you can have hand unit navigate for you in the Waze app. In the app, go to my Waze, settings, voice and sound, Waze voice, and Andy Field FNAF. Now right off the bat, I'm not being paid by Waze or endorsed by Waze to say any of this. I just thought it was a very interesting piece of news. If you don't know what Waze is, it's a GPS. You can have hand unit guide you on your GPS. It's crazy. But yeah, that's definitely one of the weirdest news topics I've ever had to discuss. A FNAF voice GPS. Wow. Now moving over to the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, we got a whole bunch of stuff from Kane Carter talking about Pop Goes and Pop Goes Arcade. First up, I just had to start off with this because this is crazy. So the other day, Kane made a tweet saying, I'm interested in the concept of a day-night cycle for Pop Goes Evergreen. The sky and lighting change in color as the night progresses. Here was an overcast daytime lighting test we did recently for the Whip car park. Unfocused to high details, I think it almost looks like a photo. What you are looking at is a work in progress car park for Pop Goes Evergreen. Like Kane said, this is not a photo, even though it, it freaking looks like it. This is in the game. It's absolutely insane. Like, it's actually mind-blowing that this this is still like a work in progress. Imagine what the final thing's gonna look like. So not only does this whip so far look amazing, I'm also super excited by the idea of a day-night cycle. I think that could be very interesting. And I definitely do think it'll add to the ambiance, to the to the setting, the overall feel of the game. I think that's gonna be a nice touch. Next up, we have possible achievements coming to Pop Goes Evergreen and maybe some more fanverse titles. Kane made a tweet saying, turns out achievements and trading cards and therefore badges, profile backgrounds, etc etc. might actually be possible for the Steam releases of Fanverse games. Maybe. I know people want these features, so if it's true, we may spend more time on Arcade to create assets for them. I'm one of those people who, for some reason, I don't really know why, just absolutely love when games have achievements. It makes me actually want to beat something and do something with that game. So the idea of achievements in the Fanverse titles is so cool. It makes them feel even more official. And trading cards and profile backgrounds and badges and all the other assets on Steam. That's also a nice touch. And now let's move on to Pop Goes and the Machinist, which is the upcoming paid DLC for Pop Goes Arcade. We got four brand new clips of upcoming features that we're gonna see in Pop Goes and the Machinist. Clip one, we have the bestiary. When you buy Pop Goes Arcade, you'll gain access to your own room in the inns, even before you reach 100%. In this room, you can read the bestiary, a book of details and stats about the enemies you find in the game. So the clips I'm about to show you are quite long. Some of them actually get up to a minute. So I'm just going to quickly summarize what's in the clip. So for clip number one, when you go into an inn, you can enter this room and in there you can find the bestiary, which as I said, is a book of collective details and stats you find about the enemies. So for example, one of the characters is the corrupt hawk. You can see where they are located, their HP, their crit attacks, their spawn rate, attacks, miss, how much tokens you get when you beat them, and a description of of the character. Also, if you find a gilded enemy, the page for the character will look like this, all shiny and glowy and yellow. So that is a look at the bestiary, moving on to clip two. The paid version of Pop Goes Arcade includes an entirely new adventure with tons of new content. New enemies, new abilities, new currency, new NPCs, new secrets, and a new mysterious final boss. And in clip number two, you can see Pop Goes goes walking around interacting with a few NPCs before going into the inn and falling down a hole into some sort of what appears to be mine shaft and there's some mysterious character talking to you over a microphone and it looks like there's some puzzle you're gonna have to solve. So that is a quick glimpse at the brand new adventure we're all gonna see in Pop Goes and the Machinist. Clip number three, you have surprise encounters. If you count all types of enemies like the plus, dead, and and gilded types, then there are 38 enemies in the original Pop Goes Arcade. Pop Goes and the Machinist by itself has over 40. Here's one of them. And in the clip, you can see that Pop Goes encounters the brand new enemy titled the Rusty Scrap Bot. And it looks like when he won, he got five new scraps. And finally, clip number four, you have a new attack called Overkill. A new mechanic in Pop Goes and the Machinist is something called Overkill. The more excess damage you do past what's needed to beat a robot, the more scrap you get when it is defeated. And that is all the news I have on the Fazbear Fanverse. 
mainly just Pop Goes and Pop Goes Arcade. And now let's move on to some merchandise, starting off with this little guy right there, new Freddy plushie. So basically, Franco made a new FNAF plushie, and uh, a lot of people are excited about it because it looks really cute, and it's snuggly, and it's fluffy, and it's cute. Uh, that's it. Let's move on to some YouTube news. So in a Q&A recently, YouTube's revealed that they are actually working on some brand new FNAF plushies. Someone said, are there plans for FNAF 2 plushies? I even made some concepts fairly recently if you're interested. YouTube's replying with, yup, we have more characters coming this summer. Your concepts are awesome. Now, when people put out this story, uh, a lot of people assume that they were talking about FNAF 2 plushies because that's what the original post talked about. Are there any plans for FNAF 2 plushies? U2 saying, yep, we have more characters coming this summer. As it turns out, though, someone reached out to U2s and asked for a clarification. Hey, is this actually FNAF 2 plushies or is it just more FNAF characters? And U2s actually responded with, oh, that was just saying we have more plushies for FNAF in general. It wasn't for a specific FNAF game, the comment. So as it turns out, we're not necessarily getting FNAF 2 plushies, we're just getting more FNAF plushies, which we kinda already knew about. We know that U2s is currently working on some security breach and just regular classic FNAF 1 plushies, so I do think it's likely that they could be talking about that in the Q&A, and not, you know, more plushies after that, because already, I mean, sheesh, this is a lot of merchandise and a lot of plushies. But we're just gonna have to wait and see what comes in the summer. We also have an update on the Fazbear Fanverse wave for U2s. I believe this also came from the same Q&A, but Kane made a tweet saying FNAF news. The upcoming Fazbear Fanverse U2s figures now have a release window of quarter three, 2022, July through September. The previous window was October through November. So yeah, they got bumped up a couple months and that's awesome to hear. And finally for U2s, the security breach wave, including the new Night Guard Daco U2s, comes out tomorrow, April 29th. And as you can see, these are all of the figures. You got Glamrock Chica, Roxanne, Vanny, Glamrock Fredboy, and Montgomery. They also revealed some of the boxes for the figures. You got Chica. Looks like her box will be themed around Chica's bakery, which is awesome. It also says you and me together, which is a quote from one of the trailers for the game. Freddy's looks like it's themed around the main lobby with the golden Freddy statue. Another quote from one of the trailers, fear takes hold. Monty, of course, is going to be themed around the Gator Golf. Once again, he has a trailer quote, and if you fear me, then you will both of you. And finally, Roxanne, themed around Roxy's Raceway. None of them will stop hunting you. Once again, a quote from one of the trailers. Second to last news, we got the Google Stadia getting Security Breach pretty soon. But yeah, Security Breach is coming to Google Stadia very, very soon. Not really much to talk about with this. It's just... It's coming to Stadia. I am putting out a short pretty soon about Security Breach coming to Google Stadia, so that'll have a bit more info for you. But now we move on to the final news story for today. I know it's sad, but this one's kind of a big one. Because Maximum Games officially revealed the collector's edition of Security Breach. It's like 150 bucks, and this is everything that comes with it. You have the exclusive U2's Vanny figure and reversible daycare attendant plushie, which yes, I do believe this means that you can only get these items from the collector's edition, which is pretty annoying seeing as they did a pretty decent job at advertising these guys only for them to be exclusive to a $150 box. The collector's edition also comes with some collectible plush pin sets, as well as a Mr. Hippo magnet, I'm so hyped about that. It also comes with a collectible steelbook, which I've seen a lot of people be just like, what's a steelbook? And it's literally just a case for the disc. And as you can see, the inside features the daycare attendant, Sun and Moon, while the outside has, of course, the logo and also Freddy and Gregory sharing a a bonding moment, touching each other's hands. And finally, the box itself is the logo for Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex and the four signatures of the Glamrock animatronics. Overall, a pretty decent collector's edition. I definitely have seen a lot of people say they could have done more, and I kind of do agree with that. A lot of people also upset that two U2's items, which again were heavily promoted, are exclusive to this $150 collector's edition. But that is going to do it for today's FNAF news video. Hopefully you all enjoyed. I'm curious, what are you most looking forward to from this video? But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.